Hello, welcome to everyone for the course on numerical linear algebra and applications. Already we have in the last lecture, we have done how to find out the solution to the linear systems. In conclusion that we will be going little ahead with the what we call the uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. As we have already seen in the linear systems ax is equal to b, we tried to decompose the matrix A into different forms out of which one of the form is LU decomposition, right. So, we wrote it as L into U, where L is the lower triangular matrix and U is the upper triangular matrix, right. This is a one of the way how we decompose the matrix A in order to get the product of two matrices so that we could able to find out the solution to the system. Now, occasionally you also do get across some of the important, uh, you know, systems like eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, the eigenvalues, you know very well, it is something analogous to the linear systems instead of Ax is equal to lambda x, right. Solution to the system Ax is equal to lambda x. This lambda is what we call the eigenvalue and the vector x is what is called eigenvector or eigenspace. So, these kind of problems you do come across quite often in many realistic applications, especially when you are dealing with control systems, then mechanical sales, general bearings, and then uh, power industry, and many, many occasions you do get this kind of systems, which we call it as eigen systems. Now, let us define formally what is eigenvalue, how one could compute the eigenvalue and associated eigenvectors for each eigenvalue. So, let A be a non singular matrix, let A be a non zero matrix, let us very specifically, so A be a non zero matrix. That means the all the entries are free from. 0, right. Some of the entries may be 0, even then we call it as a non-zero matrix. A number lambda, that is lambda belongs to set of reals, is called an eigenvalue of the matrix A if Ax is equal to lambda x, that is Ax is equal to lambda x. For a non-zero column vector x in Rn, look at here x will be free from 0 and belongs to R of n. The vector x is called an eigenvector of A. So, as I spoke, this lambda is the eigenvalue. So, this is the eigenvalue and this x is the eigenvector. x is the eigenvector. So, it is very important to see that the system is analogous to what we call x is equal to b, right. Instead of having a vector b, you do have a scalar multiplication multiplied with an unknown vector x. So, essentially what you need to find out is given a coefficient matrix A and you need to find out the eigenvalues of this system and then for each eigenvalue, you need to find out corresponding eigenvector. So, one of the remarks which you can see, zero vector is never considered an eigenvector. So, zero vector because you know anything multiplied with A, A times of 0, 0, 0, it is always lambda times of 0, 0, 0. So, anything multiplied with 0, it will vanish. Therefore, we will not be considering this 0, 0, 0 as eigenvector. So, therefore, the zero vector is not at all considered to be a eigenvector because we are looking at the non-zero vector where when you multiply this matrix A, it should be equivalent to lambda times of x. So, therefore, zero vector is not considered to be as a eigenvector. Now, next we see the singular value decomposition SVD. As we already spoke that the system will have a different kind of solutions and one of the solutions we get it is singular value decomposition. 
a homogeneous linear system of differential equation with constant coefficients you see here x prime t is equal to a times of x of t right x of 0 is equal to 0 x of 0 is equal to 0 now where a is equal to a i j m n so where a is equal to a j m n x dot is nothing but derivative of the vector that is d by dt of x1 x2 x3 x4 x and t so this is what the system that is x dot t is equal to a times of x of t x0 is equal to 0 where the matrix a is equal to a i j m or n and x dot t is nothing but d by dt of x1 x2 x3 xn so let us call this as an equation star okay so with this we can define what we call the an equilibrium solution which we call it as xc an equilibrium solution xc of the system is asymptotically stable so which we call it as asymptotically stable if there exists a lambda greater than 0 such that mod of xt minus xc is approaches to 0 that means the uh, the norm of x of t minus x of e approaches to 0 as t approaches to infinity so whenever that is norm of x naught minus x of e less than or equal to delta so therefore if you are able to find out a value positive value delta greater than 0 such that the norm of x of t minus x of e happens to be 0 as t tends to infinity whenever x naught minus x c this is less than or equal to delta then we call that the system is said to be asymptotically stable we will see at a later stage if the system is asymptotically stable then what is the advantage you do get it well a necessary and sufficient condition for system that is the previous system which we denoted with a star to be asymptotically stable is that all the eigenvalues of the matrix A have non-negative real parts. That means lambda 1 is greater than or equal to 0, lambda 2 is greater than or equal to 0, etc. All the lambdas are greater than or equal to 0. It is unstable if at least one eigenvalue has a positive real root. So it becomes a unstable. So if at least one of the eigenvalue has a positive real rule. So therefore, the idea is the following, given a delta greater than 0, you should always able to compute the norm of x t minus x of e should be less than 0 as t tends to infinity whenever this that is norm of x 0 minus x of e should be less than or equal to delta where delta is already greater than or equal to 0. So if such a delta exists, then we can call it as the system is asymptotically stable. So, in order to find out a solution to the system, it is very cumbersome to have all the properties. So, therefore, one of the properties which we would like to have is asymptotically stable if this condition holds. Next, let us see classical Gram schmidt for QR factorization. There are different number of factorizations which we already seen it in the literature. But we would like to see how actually the, the matrix A will be decomposed into a matrices of Q and R like the way which we did it A is equal to lower triangular matrix into upper triangular matrix. So this is one of the very interesting thing how the gram schmidt orthogonalization process would help us in order to decompose the matrix A into two matrices Q and R so that we could able to find out a solution to the system. So, what is the input you have? Input is A is equal to A1, A2, A3, An that is A1, A2, An which is R of M over N. Fine. So, rank of A is equal to N. Rank of A is equal to N. Okay. This is the, this is the hypothesis given to us. So, what is the output we do expect? The output we do expect is that is reduced to QR factorization. This is reduced to QR factorization. 
a is equal to that is a is equal to q r right where q is in the set m over n and r will be in set m over n right so the algorithm goes like this for k is equal to 1 to etc n right do for k is equal to 1 to etc k minus 1 do r i k is equal to q i transpose times of a k okay end so this loop ended over here similarly q k is equal to a k minus summation a k minus summation i is equal to 1 to k minus 1 r i k q i where r k k is equal to norm of q k times that is 2 norm and q k is nothing but q k upon r k k where r k k would be free from 0. Then I do close this slope over here. So, so essentially you are actually finding out two matrices q and r in a such a that a is equal to q into r. This is the algorithm how it works. Let us see very simple example how you can be able to compute the qr factorization using gram smith process. Before going to the example, we also would like to see what would be the numerical stability of this algorithm that is CGS method, gram smith orthogonal process. The above algorithm known to have serious numerical difficulties. What are the serious difficulties you do have? You may have a the incompatibility. You may have incompatibility, inconsistency, inconsistency. So these two would lead to a serious errors. Serious errors. These two would lead to a serious errors. So the algorithm known to have serious difficult numerical difficult during the computation of QKs, cancellation can take place, and as a result, the computation of QKs are far from orthogonal. See that our idea is we wanted to have orthogonal property. We wanted to have orthogonal property. So when you do this computation, so therefore the because of this numerical stability, it will have serious orthogonal property discuss, orthogonal properties. So therefore, which is not a, a desirable situation, right? So this is one of the very important thing which we note down from over here. So because of that, what we do is we try to modify the method that is CGS method, which we call it as modified Gram Smith method. So in this method, what we do is the input is a is equal to a1, a2, a3, an, which is a set of m over n, and the rank of this is equal to n. So rank of a is equal to n. Rank of a is equal to n. And what is the output? Output is reduced qr factorization of a. A is equal to qr. Q is equal to r mn, and r is m n over n. And Q is orthogonal and R is upper triangular matrix. So that means essentially the Q is what is the orthogonal matrix. Q is the orthogonal matrix and R is the upper triangular matrix. R is the upper triangular matrix. So therefore, we could able to find out the solution in such a way that you do have what we call the upper triangular matrix as well as the, the upper triangular matrix as well as orthogonal matrices. So in the previous case, what we spoke was since uh, the numerical stability, it was uh, far away from orthogonality. So that's why it was discouraged and we need to modify and this so-called what is called modified gram script method, which will give us the QR factorization that is Q QR factorization where Q is the orthogonal matrix as we spoke already and R is the upper triangular matrix which would help us in order to find out the solution to the system of equations. Well, so having had this algorithm, now it is uh, time to have a example. Let us look at simple example over here. 
look at this example here so what is the matrix a matrix a is 1.0001 and 0 and this is 10.001 look at this matrix now if you use cgs method right for k is equal to 1 what is q1 is equal to set q1 is equal to a1 as for the algorithm so 1.0001 0 and r11 R11 that is 1 and Q1 is equal to Q1 upon R11. So, this is 1.0001 and 0. Fine. For the case, Q is K is equal to 1. I am doing for K is equal to 1. Well, now let us look at into for K is equal to. So, if you go for K is equal to 2, R12 is equal to 1 and q2 is equal to a2 minus r21 q1 so that is q2 is equal to a2 minus r21 times of q1 okay so this is the matrix 0 minus 0 0.7071 0 0.7071 okay and then you will have q1 transpose q2 which is point yeah, or else I can write it as minus 7.0711 times of 10 power minus 5. Very small value you can have it. So, the value is very, very small value. So, for k is equal to 2, you get R12 is 1 and Q2 is equal to A2 minus R21 Q1. This is the one which you got and this is the one which will be obtained. That is Q1 transpose Q2 is minus 7.071 10 power minus 5. Okay, form Q1 and R1. So let's see that form Q1 and R1. So form Q1 and R1. So what is Q1? So Q1 is Q1 Q2. That is 1.000010 and this is 0. 0 0.7071 and 0 0.7071. So, this is your Q1. And what is your R1? So, R1 is R11, R12. So, that is R11, R12, 0, R22. Okay. So, from this, what you get is you do get as the elements are that is. 1, 1, 0, 1.414. So, Q1 is obtained and R1 is obtained. From the algorithm, that is, for K is equal to 1, K is equal to 2. For K is equal to 1 and K is equal to 2. So, if you use, I mean, this is the case with, as we spoke here, the CGS method, right? And, with CGS method, what you got is this is designated as a Q1 and this is designated as Q2. So now let us modify this method, which we call it as modified Gram Scott method. So Q1 is equal to A1. So Q1 is equal to A1. Fine. Q2 is equal to A2. So I have got it. So similarly, I do execute the algorithm for K is equal to 1. What would happen? R11 is equal to Q1 of 2, which is 1. Q1 is equal to 1.00010. This is the Q1. Similarly, you do get Q2, you do get Q2, and you can compute what you call R12, you can compute it. So, essentially, you can compute for K is equal to 1, and this is the R11 and Q1 and when you do R12 and you do get as Q2 as R12 as this stuff. Now with this let us see for what happens for K is equal to 2. So when you do for K is equal to 2, R22, R22 is nothing but norm of Q22. So R22 is nothing but norm of Q3. So which we get you get this matrix as 0 0.7071 0 0.7071 0 
Q1, you do get this matter. So, similarly, I do form the Q1, Q2, the way which I did it in the previous case, I wanted to form the Q1 and Q2. So, when I form this Q1 and this is the Q1 and this is the upper triangle matrix, you see here, this is the main diagonal, lower is 0. So, this is the upper triangular matrix, upper triangular matrix, this is the upper triangular matrix. And what is this thing? Orthogonal matrix. So, this is the orthogonal matrix. So, that means essentially I have got two matrices Q1 and R1 and when I modify this modify CGS method, so I do get as Q1 and R1. So, these are the Q1 and R1. Okay. Now, what is the remark I can make it over here by doing these two computations? Mathematically, the CGS and MGS algorithms are equivalent. So, how they are equivalent? So, I did for K is equal to 1. I did for k is equal to 2, the same algorithm I worked it out. So, that means they are actually equivalent. That means same set of operations I am doing, but different numerical properties. You see, that is what is important, right? So, they are actually differ from the numerical properties. Let us confirm to very specific 5 by 5 Helbert matrix. As we already seen the Helbert matrix, let us take with the 5 by 5 matrix. So, what is the order of the error? So, that is the method and I calculate i minus q transpose times of q that is 2 norm. So, the CGS method what is the order is order of 10 power minus 7, 10 power minus 7. You see here MGS method order of 10 power minus 12 and if I go for householder method 10 power minus 6. So, the idea is when you are trying to compute the numerical stability, the lesser the error the better will be the approximation. So, therefore, by using this example, what we can make a conclusion is that the MGS method is much better than the CGS method and householder method is much better than both CGS and MGS method. So, therefore, one should be very careful, careful about this uh, numerical, er, uh, numerical stability and for that we need to compute what we call the error approximations. Well, we will make some very generalized statements. So, in general, the efficiency of QR factorization by four different methods is as follows, right? So, in fact, we have not speak spoken the Givens method, but we will speak in, in the due course of time. But now, for the timing, let us compare. So, if you use householder method, 2n square times of m minus n by 3, and which we call it as a stable algorithm. Suppose n is equal to let us say 3. So, what is happened? 3, 2 into 3, 3 is a 9 minus and m is also equal to 3. Let us say 3 minus 3 by 3. So, it is 1, 2. So, 2 to the 4 into 9 it is equal to 36. So, it happens to be 36 for this case. So, what about given some method? 3 into 3, 3 is a 9 that is 3 minus 3 by 3. So, that is 1, so 1, 1, 2, 18, 18 is 54, in this case it is 54. And what about in this case, 2 into 3 into 9, 54 in this case. What about in this case, 2m n square, so 2 into 3 into 9, 54 in this case. So, household method will be the the flop count is much lesser. So, it is a still a stable algorithm. Similarly, Givens method is also a stable algorithm, which we see from over here. Right? And uh, you see CGS method, if you do not only unstable, severe loss of orthogonality. So, what we are struggling and what we are trying to see the orthogonality, so orthogonality is being lost over here when you do use CGS method. So, therefore, you do get severe difficulties and obviously, the method proven to be a unstable and it is not at all a desirable case. So, therefore, it is necessary to change the orthogonality to a perfect orthogonality so that we could able to get the stable solution. Similarly, when you go to this MGS method, better stable than CGS method, but not as stable as householder or given method. Already we have seen the flop counts. So, flop count is less. So, therefore, it is a stable algorithm. So, we should prefer this algorithm in order to find out the numerical stability of the system of equations, right? So, therefore, all that what we read, what we learn from this is, 
how solar method will give you a better approximation in compare to other methods right this is very important to worth noting of this concept okay let us go ahead with the properties so what are the properties you do have in the singular value decomposition how they could be utilized in order to find out the solution to the system so singular value decomposition and its properties svd let a be a matrix so a be a matrix of r of m over n let's say that is matter then there exist orthogonal matrices that is u belongs to r of m over n and v belongs to r of m over n such that a can be written as u times of sigma into v transpose you see that what we are trying to do we in fact initially we started with a is equal to l u then we wrote it as a qr factorization then we are trying to do little in different way that is what is called a is equal to u times of sigma into v transpose right so what is the matrix form of the a a is a r of m by n matrix and u is r of m by n matrix v is r of n by n matrix where sigma is nothing but diagonal of sigma 1 sigma 2 etc sigma n this is the diagonal matrix in the system r belongs to m n and p is the minimum of m comma n whatever it is and assuming that sigma 1 is greater than or equal to sigma 2 is greater than etc so each of the sigmas are greater than or equal to 0 which will make us to use this algorithm in the proper way well now let us go ahead with this definition the decomposition a so we wanted to write a as u times of sigma of v transpose this is what our the goal is called the singular value decomposition of the matrix a singular value decomposition of the matrix a so u belongs to r of mm which is orthogonal matrix this is orthogonal matrix and this is also orthogonal matrix sigma is the diagonal matrix so we would have it too so you should able to write it as u times of sigma of v transpose this is the form of that we should write it u is the r of orthogonal matrix and sigma is the the sigma is the matrix which is the diagonal matrix and v is also orthogonal matrix we should able to compute this so that we could able to get the the singular value decomposition okay so as a matter of illustration now it is a time to have a one better example let's see that for m is equal to 4 and n is equal to 2 right let's see that for m is equal to 4 and n is equal to 2 the following svd is of 4 by 2 that means that means you do have see here star indicates some entries non zero entries star indicates some non zero entries look at this matrix star 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 everywhere and this matrix you see star star rest are all zeros and these are all stars stars this is the coefficient matrix a which is the u upper triangle the orthogonal matrix v is the diagonal matrix v is also orthogonal matrix the diagonal entries of sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma n of the matrix a are called singular values you look at over here sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma n these are called diagonal values so wherever you get the what you call this uh, eigen values you write it as in the main diagonal they turn out to be sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 etc sigma n now for the sake of illustration right in the previous case what we did was it's a very general case let's go to the very specific case you have the matrix three rows three rows two columns three by two matrix so now let us compute what is the svd for this case i wanted to find out the the values of, the values of this 1 2 2 3 3 4 usd so when i apply this algorithm the one which we did it over here when i apply this algorithm so it turns out to be that that is the sigma is of in this form so look at here this is the main diagonal below all zeros right and this is the i mean uh, this is the matrix u matrix and this is the v matrix so what are the singular values you do get singular values you do get as 0 0.6554 6 so these are the value singular values that means ax is equal to lambda x in the system so if you use any ad hoc solution 
and you could able to find out the eigen values uh, eigen the singular values are 6.5458 so this is a two columns so therefore you do get a two singular vector so that the multiplication holds right so when you write this matrix a your multiplication also should hold it so that means a is equal to that is u times of sigma of v transpose you do get this matrix right these two are called the singular value 6.5458 and 0 0.3742 let us move ahead. What is the geometrical interpretation of these singular values? And uh, what is the implication of these values? Geometric interpretation of singular values and with these vectors. How geometrically they do define a particular case? Let us be a unisphere in R2. So let us start with unisphere in R2. Unisphere. Then the image of S under A is hyper ellipsoid. Look at this. The image of S under A is hyper ellipsoid. Where the E is defined as E is equal to summation X that is norm of X2 is equal to 1. Norm of X2 is equal to 1. So that means S is the uni hemisphere in Rn. Then the image of S under A is hyper hyper ellipsoid that means the way which we have calculated that is it becomes hyper ellipsoid so therefore you end up with what you call a is equal to that is the set of all ax such that ax2 is equal to 1 well we could quickly define what are the singular properties of this svd singular values are lengths of the semi axis of a so that means geometrically they are actually symmetric that is singular values They are all lengths, lengths of the semi axis. They are all lengths of the semi axis. The left single vectors are the unit vectors in the direction of the semi axis of A. That is second point. Third point is the right singular vector or the unit vectors in S that are pre images of the semi axis. So, with these three properties, we could able to find out the singular value decomposition in the I survey. Well, so let us return back. So, geometric interpretation of singular values and singular vectors. You see here, let S be the sphere in Rn, that is Rn, then the image of S under A is hyper ellipsoid. So, you do get what you call hyper ellipsoid. So, it is defined as norm of 2 is equal to 1. Well, so you see the singular values are lengths of the semi axis of E. That is the one conclusion. The left singular vectors are the unit vectors in the direction of the semi axis. Third one is the right singular vectors are the unit vectors of S that are pre images of semi major axis. So, with these three conclusions, we could able to find out a specific examples for the singular values. So, now we would return back to the what is the modification we can do for the singular value decomposition how it overcomes such difficulties now let us start with the matrix a a is r of m n m over n m is greater than or equal to n can be written as a is equal to so that is u prime omega 1 v transpose right so v prime transpose so v prime u prime is a new matrix sigma 1 is a new matrix and V1 transpose is also a new matrix. That is, which we are using it as reduced singular value decomposition. And where U prime is an M by N orthogonal matrix, and sigma 1 is N by N diagonal matrix, and V is an N by N orthogonal matrix. Right? So, with these things, we could able to make some remarks over here. For wide applicability of singular values in practical applications is that the singular values are well conditioned. You see here, what is a very important noteworthy thing. For wide applicability of singular values in practical applications is that singular values are well conditioned. Right? You see some examples. Find the matrices U sigma V for the matrix A. Let us say A is equal to 3, 0, 4, comma 5. Such that so, the rank of this matrix, what is the rank of this matrix? 
rank of this matrix is obviously determinant of a is nothing but 15 minus 0 so which is equal to 15 not equal to 0 so therefore rank of a is obviously equal to 2 right rank of a is equal to so what are the eigenvalues if you want to compute so a minus lambda i is equal to 0 so this is the what you get lambda is equal to 3 and lambda is equal to 5 out of this maximum value is the 5 and minimum value is 3 for this matrix right now begin with a transpose a let us see that a transpose a what would happen so if you do it a transpose a so a is a matrix and a transpose is this so you do get what you call 25 20 20 25 this is the matrix and similarly when you use this a times of a transpose you do get as 9 12 12 41 this is the matrix you do get it right so therefore the matrix so obtained a transpose a turns out to be this matrix and the matrix a into a transpose that means a transpose you are multiplying, pre multiplying here, here you are post multiplying. As you know very well, matrix multiplication is not committed to. That means A times of B is not equivalent to B times of A all the time. Okay. So these have the same trace 50 and the same eigenvalues. So what is the trace of this matrix? You see here, trace is nothing but sum of the diagonal values. So 25 plus 25 that is equal to 50 in this case. What about in this case? 9 plus 41 is equal to 50. So that means some of the diagonal values same in this case, some of the diagonal values also in this case. So therefore, the trace happens to be same, but you see the differences. These matrices will have same trace 50 and same eigenvalues. Lambda 1 square is equal to 45, lambda 2 square is 45. The square roots are that is this thing, then sigma 1, sigma 2 is 15, and this is the determinant of this matrix. So, in this case, as we spoke, the determinant happens to be same as the, the what do you call, the 15, the determinant is 15 and the multiplication of two eigenvalues also happens to be 15. So, a key step to find eigenvectors, are the, now we will see that for each corresponding eigenvector, that is lambda 1 is equal to 45 and lambda 2 is equal to other value, we find out the eigenvalues. So, that means a minus lambda i operating on x is equal to 0. So, we need to find out the, the non-zero vector x in such that a minus lambda i is equal to 0, where lambda i is corresponding the eigenvectors and i is the, the unit vector. Well, so if you do that, you get as the v1, v2 are orthogonal vectors. That means v1 is orthogonal to v2 vectors. Right? So, eigenvector rescale to length 1, let us say. So, right singular vector, it turns out to be v1 is equal to 1 by square root of 2 times of 1 comma 1 and in this case 1 by square root of times of minus 1 comma plus 1. So, we see that the, the right singular vector v1 is this thing and left singular vector is this thing. So, they are differed by the, the values over here, but the coefficient is remains same in either cases. So, when you do compute with a v1 and a v2, so you get this sigma 1 u1 is this, sigma 2 u2 is this. So, a v1 turns out to be this, a v2 turns out to be this. So, u1, u2 are orthogonal vectors. That means u1 is orthogonal to u2. Right? The, so, essentially, when you talk about in terms of inner product, so this happens to be 0 because they are all orthogonal. So, therefore, Sigma 1 is equal to square root of 25, sigma 2 is equal to square root of 5 is as expected in the previous case. So, that means we will be able to get the same values as we are expecting in the previous case. So, let us go ahead. Therefore, the singular value decomposition that is finally we can write it as a is equal to u times of sigma of v transpose where this u is of this form and sigma as you know very well that is 45. Sigma is, as you know, this is uh, uh, 45 and uh, this is actually, you know, the this is actually 5, square root of 5. So, there is an error over here, square root of 5. And V1 is, find this thing. U and V are contains orthogonal basis for the column vector space and the row space. Both spaces are just in R2 space. So, that is what we learned from this, uh, the how actually we would be decomposing this matrix. So, therefore, we can make a conclusion the real achievement is that those two bases diagonalize 
the matrix A, AV is equal to sigma times of AV, then the matrix U transpose A is orthogonal matrix. That is what we see from this computation. So, the matrix A splits into a combination of two one rank matrices and a column rank matrices. You see over here. So, when you compute sigma 1, U1, V1 transpose, and similarly, when you compute sigma 2, U2, V2 transpose, you do get what you call the matrix A. This is the matrix A would be obtained as expected from the computation. So, let us look at into there are a number of examples. In the previous case, we have taken the example 2 by 2. You can take the example over here that is 2 rows, 3 columns. Then what would be the form of the sigma u v by using the singular value decomposition? So, with the same algorithm you have to apply it, you would be able to end up with the vectors. So that is, this is the one vector, this is another vector, this is another vector corresponding. So, which we call it as v1, v2, v3. So, you get the matrix what we call the matrix u. Same algorithm and same kind of computation, which I shall not be doing it, but you can get this matrix. Right? Similarly, the sigma you do get like this, that is, these are the you know eigenvalues on the main diagonal, rest will be zeros, and this is the matrix you do get it. So, SVD in watermarking on image processing, so you do find it applications in many, many areas, especially in watermarking on images, computer weighted tomography, least squares, and control systems, medical imaging, and many other areas, wherever there is a predictions are being involved. So, therefore, we use quite often the singular value decomposition and its variant versions, how we can modify these versions in order to get the better solutions. So, with this concept, I stop over here and uh, we will get into the uh, few more examples and uh, next concepts in the another lecture. Thank you very much for carefully listening to my lecture for today. Thank you.